good morning good evening good afternoon how are you doing my name is george ngugi of the throne room herald i want to share something that is so significant something that god actually just showed my heart the other day and i was like wow the things i've taken for granted but this thing kind of caught me not unawares not that i didn't know about it but like i keep telling you sometimes you may read a scripture and it jumps out and it comes out with a fresh life and you see God's perspective on any matter. So that I don't take a long time explaining, allow me to read a scripture and then we'll share the wisdom of the same scripture. It's found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 7, and it says like this, Also, seek the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray for the Lord, pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Okay, Prophet Jeremiah was referring to Babylon because at this particular time, King Nebuchadnezzar will take over the city, he will take over Jerusalem because already he was conquering so many places. He was like the king of kings, as the Bible declares and calls him at, uh, in a later book, the book of Daniel. So, I want you to picture something. Uh, the country you love, where you live, is going to be conquered by someone else. And this someone else decides to take you to where they live. Say you are in US, for example. Allow me to use the example. Russia conquers US. And they decide to take you to Moscow. The place that you dread. The thing that you can't imagine that from New York, now you have to live in Moscow. Or from... That's how serious it was. But then this is what Prophet Jeremiah said. Let me repeat again before I share four points of which God showed me. Also, seek the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. So God is saying, I'm the one who has permitted and allowed this to happen. So what are you supposed to do? Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Oh my God. You know the things you can't imagine God can do, but he still allows them to happen. Is because he has an eternal purpose. The same book in Jeremiah 29, 11, the one that we love to talk about and said, oh, good are the plans God has for us, that to give us a future and a hope. You know, God knows everything, the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Because God is the one who organizes and arranges all these things. So what is God trying to tell us? You know, because most of us are employed and we work for people who don't even believe the things we do. We work for companies that we wish we had our own businesses. Sometimes you work in a place and it can actually be very good. Your boss can be the best boss, but deep down in your heart you know that you want something of your own. You don't have that freedom to do anything you want and of course, even if I was your boss, I would not allow you to permit you to do everything else that you want to do. But according to God, He wants you and I whether you are in business, whether you are employed, in a city that is the city you are born, God wants you to pray and to commit that place and those people you work with and to Him. Maybe the clients are of foreign tongue, people that you are not even used to. They are not even people that you are accustomed to. You may love it, you may like it, but according to God, don't just love it and don't just hate it. Commit those place, that place and those people to God because this is what God, I saw this is how God is. I'll read the points because they're a bit long and I wanted to read exactly as I felt them in my spirit. And I'm really hoping that you're going to learn something. In the few minutes that we have, about four minutes, I want you to learn something. And I want you to know that God has a purpose and an intention. So don't just overlook where you are and don't think it's just, ah, I'm waiting to come out. Even as you wait, even as God has a future for you, consider these things. Number one. Everything is wider and greater than any of us can fathom in one sitting, brother. So you can never totally conclude on a matter, especially when you have a strong opinion about something. Remember this, even sinners belong to God. God cares for all humanity. What we consider secular and ungodly is not hidden from God. He minds it too. Number two I saw was, God's purposes and foreknowledge are so far-reaching. Huh? To the extent whereby we don't have enough capacity to know them, it's just glancing them. So, under that point I saw, 
God can do anything at any time, even using wicked people. Yeah. God can use a robber to bless you. God can use just anything to do whatever he wants to be done. Uh, a small point on that second point, what we consider as, insimpo- as impossible is nothing in God's eyes. God desires that we pray and intercede even for things we don't understand. That's one of the hardest points, but just God will tell him about it. He knows about it, but he wants you to speak about it. It's not so much that you're telling him, it's what he'll be doing in your heart, shaping your attitude, how you look at matters, how you look at things. That's what God does. He wants you to have a heart like his, that yes, it's China, it's, it's uh, um, Morocco or another place. Consider it. Those are people who live there. Whether you think they're wicked, they have no human rights. Right now people are talking about Qatar because of the World Cup. Oh, it should have been another country. <laughs> In the records of heaven, God knew about this and he allowed it to happen. So don't oppose before you know what God thinks about it. The last two points. God's will, this is number three now. God's will and mercy's threshold. God's, so let me come, let me take it again. God's will and mercy threshold is so vast, no one can dare question it. On that point I saw, God is indeed over all. Even over every kingdom and authority and tongue found in this universe. God's word is sovereign. Actually, it's a sovereign law. <laughs> Therefore, it has to be obeyed without question. He, after all, is a great God. But I don't mind this. It's raining so hard. I'm sure that it's been captured by my mic. It's alright. It's alright. We thank God for the rain. God's inward plan. This is still under point number three. God's inward plan is more detailed than we can appreciate. His will should therefore be respected. And the final point, ah, wow, this is a favorite of my heart. Intercession benefits not just the intercessor. Ah, sorry, let me take it again. Intercession benefits the intercessor more than they can imagine. Yes, intercession benefits the intercessor more than they can imagine. Remember the verse, Jeremiah 10, 11, the, uh, 7, sorry, the one that we just read, talks about if that city prospers, if that job prospers, if your boss prospers, if your clients prosper, even if some of them are the most wicked people, you too will prosper because you have committed it to God. And when you pray, you allow God to work in a particular way. Oh, so that I don't get ahead of myself. Let me, let me just... Despite the cruelty of Babylon, where they were being sent, God had an agenda from the beginning and he needed human partners to see through it. Imagine that's how God sees it. He wanted to partner with him. Every power and authority we can imagine has their origin from God, including Babylon. And he influences their rise and fall depending on how they respond to him. Why should it fall when you are there? When you can tell God something about the city, about those clients, about the place you work, and finally, under point number four again, the purposes of God in any place have to be bathed out. Mark you this word. Has it. Meaning that there's always good, even in the worst of circumstances. My friends, I hope you've gotten something. It's not that I wanted to make this log, uh, vlog very long, but I know you've gotten something. That even in the worst of situations, even if you don't seem to see the good of anything, even if your heart is desiring to just have your own job, you hate your boss, you hate your place of employment, that place falls, God will ask you. But if you pray for it, even if God has determined its fall, just do your part. Because it could be that maybe God wants you to say something about your clients, about where you work, about the people you deal with, about the contracts you have to make, Maybe the word you speak is the word that will reform and save that institution and that place. God bless you so much. See you in the next vlog and consider subscribing. I assure you, God will bless you as you continue watching and listening. Thank you so much for even staying all the way to the end. God bless you once again. This is the Room Herald. It comes to you with wisdom for everyday living.